Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to be talking about osmoregulation and its importance in maintaining homeostasis in the body and then spend some time talking about two different types of osmoregulation, osmoconformers and osmoregulators. So let's start out by talking about osmosis because in order to understand any of the rest of the video you have to have an understanding of what osmosis is. So osmosis is when a solvent, typically water, so when solvent molecules pass through a semi-permeable membrane going from a less concentrated to a more concentrated solution. The effect of that is to kind of equalize the concentrations of the solutions on either side of that semi-permeable membrane. And as I said, uh, typically when we talk about osmosis, we're talking about water, and that's going to be true for the rest of this video. Now let's talk about what we mean by osmolarity. So osmolarity is talking about the concentration um, or specifically the ratio of solutes to water. So how concentrated the solution is, how many solutes there are per amount of water. And now we get into the real buzzword for this video and that is osmoregulation. Osmoregulation is when an organism regulates its osmolarity. So when an organism regulates its, the osmolarity of its body fluids in order to maintain homeostasis. Now we know that homeostasis refers to the steady state condition of the body. So keeping the body at a good physiological homeostasis um, that will allow its various functions to continue and allow the organism to survive. So specifically here, we're talking about the fact that our cells are surrounded by semi-permeable membranes. There are uh, types of, of, of channel proteins called aquaporins that allow water to go from one side of the membrane to another. And so if the osmolarity, the concentration of solutes to water inside a, an organism is different than that concentration outside the organism, then you can have water flowing through the, the process of, of osmosis, flowing either in or out of the organism in order to equalize the concentration of the solutes both inside and outside the organism. Now there are two ways that organisms deal with this situation, two ways in which they osmoregulate. One is that some organisms are osmoconformers. Other organisms are osmoregulators. Now osmoregulators are more common uh, among animals, but first let's talk about osmoconformers. Osmoconformers are, are organisms that match their body's osmolarity to their uh, external environment. Um, so another way of thinking about this is that <clears throat> osmoconformers are animals that uh, ensure that their internal body fluids are isoosmotic or isosmotic with uh, the fluids in their surrounding environment. So some examples of osmoconformers include most marine invertebrates like lobsters or starfish uh, and also some sharks. <clears throat> now there are some pros and cons for being an, uh, an osmoconformer. The pro is that osmoconformers, they don't have to spend very much energy on osmoregulation. The con is that the bodies of osmoconformers are really subject to a wide range of osmolarities. Remember osmolarity being the different types of concentrations that they might experience of solutes to water in their various environments. And so they really have to be able to withstand uh, what can be some large swings in, uh, in osmolarity. 
So definitely pros and cons to that approach. Osmoregulators are organisms that, you guessed it, regulate. So osmoregulators regulate their body's osmolarity to maintain constant internal conditions. So regardless of what's happening in their environment, they are going to expend energy to regulate their body's osmolarity to maintain whatever their preferred constant osmolarity is. So let's talk briefly about the pros and cons here. Of course, these will uh, be sort of related to the related to the pros and cons of osmoconformers, but opposite. And what I mean by that is osmoregulators have to expend energy to regulate their internal osmolarity. Uh, you know, and so that takes energy to, to do that, which can be detrimental to an organism uh, if it's having to work too hard to do that. But of course, the pro is that they do maintain this constant internal condition, and so their various physiological processes are able to take place uh, in what are the optimal conditions for that particular organism, rather than having to deal with the various swings and osmolarity that osmoconformers might have to deal with. So certainly pros and cons to each. Now, since osmoregulation is much more common uh, among animals, I want to give some examples of it. Let's start by looking at the difference between freshwater fish and marine fish. Now, there are certain fish that can live in freshwater and live in saltwater and adapt to both, but that's fairly rare. For the most part, freshwater fish cannot survive in saltwater and saltwater fish cannot survive in freshwater. And that is because of the different ways in which they've adapted to osmoregulate. So let's talk about freshwater fish first. So here we have a drawing of a freshwater fish. Now, of course, a fish that lives in freshwater is going to have a higher concentration of salts and solutes inside its body than there will be in the freshwater outside its body. Now, as a result, because there are more salts inside, a more concentrated solution inside, water is going to flow from where it's less concentrated, which is in the fresh water, to where it's more concentrated, which is inside the fish. So water is going to be diffusing into the fish. Now, in order for it to regulate its internal osmolarity, it has to be able to, to deal with this influx of water. And it does this with a few different mechanisms. Its gills actually take up salt, whatever salt they can find in the fresh water, um, to, to sort of help even out this concentration so that the water doesn't have to move into the fish as much to do that. Also, these fish do not drink water. We'll talk later about how saltwater marine fish do drink water uh, for their particular form of osmoregulation, but freshwater fish do not. They're having so much water diffusing into them that they don't drink it through their mouths at all. They also excrete very dilute urine. So that means urine that is diluted with a lot of that excess water to get rid of it, since so much more is always coming in. Now, from the opposite point of view, marine fish, those who live in saltwater environments, that salt water that surrounds them is going to be the more concentrated solution. And inside their body is going to be less concentrated. And so water is going to want to flow from inside their body outwards. And so that water will just diffuse out of these fish, which can be uh, dehydrating and problematic. But they have ways to deal with that. One is that their gills actually excrete salt. And so by getting rid of that sort of extra salt, it helps them to balance out this water movement. They also are continuously drinking water through their mouth. So they'll be taking water in, whereas freshwater fish are only using their mouths to eat solid food, marine fish are going to use their mouths to eat solid food, but also to just be continuously drinking to try to replace the water that they are losing. And then also these marine fish have 
mechanisms within their excretory systems that allow them to excrete very concentrated urine. This means that their urine is concentrated as much as it can be so that it has a, a lot of solutes per unit of water so they don't have to lose too much water to get rid of their waste products. And that also helps them to, to retain water and prevent dehydration. So we can see here two uh, ex, you know, extreme examples from animals that live in these kinds of opposite environments. Now briefly, let's talk about humans because humans are also osmoregulators. Humans use a specific type of organ that you have heard of called kidneys. So humans use kidneys to filter out their blood, to remove the waste products from the blood, uh, waste products either that from something that perhaps has been ingested and cannot be used, or waste products from cellular metabolism. But the, the, the kidneys filter these things from the blood and have mechanisms that allow for the production of pretty concentrated urine. Uh, and that also helps us to retain water and not to lose too much water through urination, which prevents dehydration uh, and allows us to maintain our particular uh, desired osmolarity internal conditions, despite what our environment is like. So that is it for today, talking about osmoregulation. Thank you for watching Biology Professor.